Hey guys, Luke here, and this video is going to be talking about uh, Kieran Foran moving from the Manly Warringah Seagulls to the Parramatta Eels. Now, uh, first off, I want to say I think this is a great signing for the Eels. I think the Eels have actually recruited really well, as of Manly, actually, um, funnily enough, considering for a while it looked like they were going to be shit for this year, uh, or for 2016. But, um, yeah, they've really recruited well, but um, the Eels have gone out and they've bought a lot of players, and uh, I've already talked about Michael Jennings moving to them. And apologies, it just seems like I'm just doing... Um, Really, at the moment, I'm just doing either Roosters or, like, players leaving the Roosters or, and um, players joining the Eels at the moment. But I can assure you, it's just more of, so the fact that they're more high-profile uh, signing. So I will get to the others. Uh, but Kieran Foran is, uh, he's one that's interesting. Uh, obviously, Kieran Foran is a huge, is a huge, like, signing for the Eels. He's a big-name player. Um, obviously, plays in New Zealand, won Premiership. And, you know, had... Some of the other trends has not happened this season. He would definitely be... I mean, I still, I still think he is the biggest or the most high-profile um, signing. But just because of all the recent signings and just there's been a constant stream of new players signing, like, all the time. It's not as if, you know, before, say, Kieran, uh, Kieran Foran would sign for Parramatta and that would be, like, the biggest name. And, you know, there'd be other signings, but not nothing too major. But, you know, now there's still James Roberts and Tim Lafay leaving and then Hopper Whitey leaving. Like, there's there's so many other big name players who are, are still making moves um, late on. So you tend to forget all the ones that happened during, like, the regular season happened at normal time and, you know, weren't, you know, getting released from their contract because, you know, that, that's what's going on right now. A lot of players getting released from their contracts and they're the ones um, doing the rounds in the media and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, Foreign is someone who I keep forgetting about him. Uh, Trent Merrin's another one. Um, big name signings, New South Wales, um, New Zealand. And I, I keep forgetting that they, they've signed for a new club. And um, I'd say Foreign got overshadowed a little bit by the Cherry Evans saga, which probably worked out well for him. But um, I don't think Foreign had a great year this year. I've seen actually, obviously, for obvious reasons, him, him leaving the club and that. But, you know, some Manly fans did turn on Foreign. But I will say, I've always been a fan of Kieran Foreign. When he was, you know, nearly signed for the Bulldogs. I, I would have loved if he had signed for the Bulldogs. Uh, that being said, though, he's a 5'8". Uh, I'm not saying he can't play halfback, but he, yes, I'd say he probably can't. Um, just, I, I'm not sure how he'd deal with the extra responsibility. Like, he's gone from Manly, which was him and Cherry Evans as a combination, which worked really well, because they both had the same amount of pressure. It wasn't like people were expecting something to come from foreign. It was you know, it's going to come from other foreign or Cherry Evans or Brett Stewart, Jamie Lyon. Like, there's so many different players. Now he's going to the Eels. They've paid huge money for him. And it looks like he is going to be playing halfback, you would think. And Corey Norman isn't isn't someone who appears to be someone who directs players around a lot, like, in terms of he can play halfback as well. So they've basically got two five eights now, which is, I don't know, I'm not going to say it won't work because, you know, it, it might work. It just might work. Um... But yeah, it just it's it's interesting um, situation that they're in because they've paid huge money for Kieran Foran, who's a five eight, but he's not that dominant five uh, five eight. He's sort of you know sort of went half half with Cherry Evans, but Cherry Evans seems to do the most. This is just my opinion, by the way. This isn't a fact. If you disagree, that's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, I think Foran is a definitely a good player. Um, he does have the skill, but I think it's more of just he's got like a good footy brain, and you know he just tries really hard. He works really hard. Um, and, you know, he's a good defender. He's pretty good in attack. You know, he's got a decent kicking game, that sort of stuff. Like, he's, he's a really good player. I really rate Kieran Foran. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how this all works for the Eels. Like, I assume it will all work out okay for them in the end. But um, at the same time, you know, they've paid huge money for him. And they've paid huge money for players like him. I know Sandoz is nowhere near as good as Foran. But, you know, that they've tried to sign all these big name halves. Even Norman to an extent. Norman's done quite well, but... Uh, you know, they've signed all these halves looking for the answer. And, uh, I mean, specifically the halfback position. 5-8, not so much. But halfback, they keep looking for the next Sterlo and, you know, looking for the, you know, the new superstar, especially now that Hayne's not there. I think, actually, Hayne not being there has worked well for the Eels. But, um, but, yeah, I'm not sure that Foran's the answer to number seven. But, I mean, if they can find enough... They've got Cornish coming in as well. So, may, maybe the ideal situation is... Cornish at halfback, four on at five eight. 
I'm not sure. But then at the same time, where does that leave Corey Norman? He can play fullback, but you've gone and signed Michael Gordon as well. I doubt he'd want to play in the wing. Like They've got a lot of options. It's just a matter of which one's the best option. And I assume they're going to go with Foran and Norman to start off the season. And I probably will do a really, really good job. I, I'm not doubting that they won't do a good job. It's just, you know, is that the best option? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, Foran, great player, great signing. Um, yeah, that's, that's not the way you're going to say. The only thing is the amount of money they would have had to pay for him. Now, they've been having salary cap problems. They've released a few players. They signed Jennings. I talked about this briefly. You know, they're, they're getting talked about, you know, being punished for being over salary cap for next season and that sort of stuff. And, you know, they could go out and sign Michael Jennings while releasing Kapawati. But, um, but yeah, Foran, he's going to be a shitload. There's going to be lots of pressure from not just, you know, on himself, but media. Fans going to be on his back if he plays a bad game. That's just what happens. Just watch Cherry Evans. Anytime he has a bad game, he's always going to be brought up how much he's getting paid. That big contract. Oh, you're here for so many years. Yada yada yada. It's always going to get brought up. Same thing will happen to Foreign. Uh, it's just I think Foreign's a way more likable person. So yeah, I don't think they'll get on his back quite as much. But, um, but yeah, he's kind of joined forces with a few manly players. Um, you know, well with the coach pretty much I believe was a huge reason why he signed, and um, that's another interesting dynamic is, is the coach, but I'll get to that for another video, we'll, we'll save those sort of ones for a different video, just talking about foreign at the moment, um, I'm not sure what side he's going to play on, nor do I think it really matters, uh, one thing that I do remember from foreign at Manly was, from what I've been told and seen that sort of stuff, he was good at, you know, Ch Tony Williams, um, the best years that Tony Wins played were outside of Kieran Foran. And I think that's largely due to the fact that Kieran Foran would constantly get in his ear, basically telling him what to do. So maybe that goes completely against what I've been saying about, um, you know, not being able to direct the side around as well, you know, as a halfback should. Maybe he can do it perfectly fine. Who knows? Anyways, I've rumbled on a lot. Not sure how much sense I've actually talked, but overall, I think it's a good signing. If I had to give a, give a rating out of 10, I'd give it a solid 8.5 out of 10, I reckon. The reason it's not a 9 or a 10 is just, just because of how much uh, they've paid for him. And, you know, you just got to have to wait and see if he can live up to the expectations. Anyway, so the video is going to end. Hopefully you enjoy. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter at MrLukeMyT, face the page in the description below, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye, guys.